Live from Studio 1A, KMUE proudly presents Something to Think About. Your host, Mark Turner. Hey, thanks. Thank you very much. Let's get started. We're going to finish up today with Christopher Small's musicking. Remember that music is socially constructed. It's a, a, emblematic. It's a symbol of who we are. As you see from the graphic in front of you, we have many, many different cultures, and most of them are not associated with Western Europe. Therefore, Western art music is not who they are. It's something else. And in this day and age, we need to be cognizant of the fact that there are other musics out there that are as viable and enjoyable as the music to which we listen. One of the reasons I assigned this book for us is that it helps us deconstruct. It's a great word these days. It helps us deconstruct how we approach music. It helps us to wrap our brains around something that we may not give much thought to, not in a thoughtless way, but we just take it for granted. And taking it for granted may not be the best option for us. So as we approach Western art music, there have traditionally been two competing views. There's the view that music represents some human emotion, some quality of human life, and Suzanne Langer wrote a lot about this in her writings on philosophy, not necessarily about music per se, but about art in general. She believes that music is the tonal analog of emotive life, and that's one of the taglines of an aesthetic philosophy. The tonal analog. The tonal analog of emotive life. It just sounds cool. That's Suzanne Langer. On the other side of the coin, there's the formalists. And the formalists believe that it is just sound. That's all. And because of the way the sounds are put together in this form and that form, it's beautiful. There is beauty in music simply because of the way it is constructed. Which leads us to another point that he talks about, which is, is the meaning of music inside the music? or is it outside the music? This gets back to the, the previous slide in that is it representing something inside of us or is it something in and of itself? That's another aspect of the question that we need to address. He begins his discussion with the rise of instrumental music to its prominence, to its peak, as a symphonic form with our good friend Claudio Monteverde. With the advent of opera, and I won't go through music history, I'm sure you remember all of that, with the advent of opera, we see, or that we hear, let me say, that music can support an emotional quality of the singer. Music now is carrying aesthetic, a, an emotion, that it did not necessarily carry earlier on. And as we know, there were a whole litany of different devices to portray this emotion and that emotion. So music now is an emotional vehicle. It's not simply sound, it's something more. As you know from music history, Western art music, we trace back to its beginnings in the church. It served a purpose in the church. It wasn't a solo thing. It was part of something else. And it also was part of a larger something else, maybe a dance. And then it served a purpose as an opera, part of spectacle. It evolves in the 18th century into its own thing. It begins to have a life of its own. And through 
that century, the 18th century, symphonies are developed. And it leads to the height of absolute music, which, as we see here, is Brahms. And with Brahms, we see perfection of form. Small traces that perfection of form back to what he would call a meta-narrative. And meta-narratives are used in all dramatic works, be they plays or novels or stories, or in this case, music. There's an established order, there's order disturbed, and there's order reestablished. Beginning, middle, and end. And we see this with the creation of the symphonic form, sonata form. And just to give you some background or reinforce what you already know about Reamer, it's that when you understand how music is put together with this part and this part and that you go to here and then it comes back to there and then it modulates here and then it does this and then that and da 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 That intellectual understanding combined with listening to a performance leads to the aesthetic experience. That is why we have music education, because it will lead to the aesthetic experience. One of the last points that he makes in this section is this idea of enduring music. What is enduring music? Why do we have enduring music? As you can see here, we have Handel and Haydn. Handel wrote pieces for a specific performance. The example here is Messiah. One would expect that this con uh, oratorio will be sung every Christmas simply because it celebrates Christ's birth. One would expect that. He probably expected that. Haydn, while he wrote the creation, he also wrote instrumental music. And people who were writing instrumental music at this time were writing a lot of it. While we don't necessarily want to admit it, symphonies and other music written in the late 18th century was sort of not pop music, not popular music, but music that was never intended to be heard more than one time. That is why there were an estimated 20,000 symphonies written in the last 50 years of the 18th century. A great question that Small asks is, how many times did Beethoven think he would hear any of his symphonies. Earlier than that, just a couple decades before, the assumption was it's a one-off. You play it once and you're done. And yet Small makes the comment that we envision these pieces that Beethoven wrote or Haydn wrote or whomever wrote as music bequeathed to our time by great musicians which have permanent existence and meaning and value beyond any performance. And they may, we've come to expect that or we've come to learn that or we've come to value that. And yet, is that the way they were composed? Interesting question. Finally, performances. Again, he comes back to the performance, a performance of a symphony. And a performance is a statement of who we are. Anyone that goes to a symphonic performance is making a statement to the world, this is who I am, this is who I am, this is what I believe. 
my values are explored, they are affirmed, and they are celebrated through the vehicle of a public performance of music. He ends with the image of a solo flute player. And his caveat there right before the chapter, his kind of prelude to the chapter, is worth noting. While Western art music that we at performances that we attended at a concert hall affirms our values, this gentleman on this hilltop playing this flute is also affirming who he is through the performance of his music. Again, you need to take everything with a grain of salt, but there is, there is truth. There are elements of truth in all that we read. Maybe not the whole enchilada, maybe just one little spice. And it's your job to pick out the spice. Thanks for listening. Take care. Bye-bye.